please. You know, I've been playing number 10 all yeah. my life. I think uh, I'm very affectionate. And uh, uh, would you be so kind to tell me, to give me the shirt? And he said, Franco, can you just please f off? <laughs> <laughs> this is the four hole challenge we're down here at the beautiful london club the international course and i have been joined by my footballing hero jan franco <laughs> Oh, la, 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 la. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm very good and I'm after your money, big time. <laughs> so, ready for it. You're right, I, you wouldn't tell me your handicap, but your son's here and he told me. He lied. He did not lie. He did lie to you, I promise. He wants me to be beaten by you, but it's not going to work. <laughs> I promise. Because you're Joan Franco Zola, forget about the shots, let's just go. And um, yeah. Even. E even, yeah. That's fine. Right. I, I like this. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> He's off three, by the way. <laughs> three. I'm 16. If that, you're off three. Uh, right, let's get cracking. But massive, massive thank you to Function 18 for sponsoring this video. Honestly, guys, check them out different class. You get all the club we've got, all this, the, the Puma stuff we've got, and other stuff as well. Right, I'm buzzing. You ready? ready? Jan Frankel's oh, la 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 la. Okay, like a pitching wedge. Straight down the <laughs> middle. That just looked effortless. <laughs> they didn't, it, it, it's not effortless. Just the way you sort of caress the football, just caresses the goal <laughs> for. Have I gone too much here with the driver, do you think? No, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, uh, you can use, use a driver as well if you want to. Right. <laughs> you know, we were talking about nerves, didn't we? <laughs> Oh, that's... I, I, was, uh, I was aware of your draw. <laughs> I think it's going to be harder that. than I thought. It's going to be a good game. It's going to be a good one. Gianfranco, once again, thank you so, Pleasure. so much. Pleasure. As I said, my hero growing up. So it's an absolute privilege for me to be doing this. Um, how did you get into golf? And who got you into golf? Well, I got... Uh, into golf in 1997 when I first uh, came over here and uh, the guy who introduced me to golf was uh, Vialli, Gianluca. Gianluca Vialli. Yeah, yeah, I remember that uh, uh, one day we got out of uh, training and uh, he said to me, come on, we go and play golf today. We go and try to practice. So he took me to uh, Chizik, uh, sorry, Chizik Golf Course is a, is a small golf course uh, in uh, Duke's Middle, I think, is yeah. in uh, Chizik. And uh, so he got me there and I tried and it was like a drug for me. I couldn't stop playing. Really? Just yeah, like, yeah. so addictive, isn't it? Very, very addictive. For me also, it was very important because, he, you know, he, he allowed me to rest after the training. Otherwise, I would always be thinking about football and so it was very good for me. Yeah. Uh, how is Gianluca? Um, he's been a bit ill, hasn't he? Yeah, he had a few problems. Man, now seems to be okay, luckily. Thanks God, and uh, he's doing he's doing very well. So very pleased with. Good to hear. Good to hear. Uh, who's really? the best footballer at golf? Because I've seen I see you uh, with JT and Shevchenko the other week down <laughs> Wentworth. Uh, who's the best? Well, I think right now, I mean, the one I played and the best one is uh, Sheva. Yeah. Andrew is, uh, he has uh, professional standards, so he's very good. Really? Because jo yeah, John Terry is so. unbelievable as well, but you're saying Shevchenko is the one. John Terry, John Terry will become very good. Uh, I don't think he has spent as much time as <laughs> Sheva has, uh, but, uh, but uh, John Terry is another one, very promising. Um, Big, the biggest bandit I've seen in my <laughs> life. The biggest bandit I've seen in my life. <laughs> Last Terry, time we played, they asked me nine shots. Nine shots? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you read me apart. I remember we were playing, um, we were playing at a charity uh, golf day, and everyone was calling him a bandit then. Oh yeah, and it's one of the it's... first things you said is John Terry is a bandit. Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> I'm not gonna, you know, withdraw from that. It's really, <laughs> he's a good friend, but when he plays golf, you you wanna do something else. Unbelievable. <laughs> um, let's take it right back to the beginning. What was a young Gianfranco Zola like? Uh, what was very introvert, very timid, but uh, with a lot of uh, passion, a yeah. big passion, and uh, a lot of desire to, you know, do something in football. And so uh, I, I really worked a lot uh, and dedicated a lot about to, to football. And uh, I think that was the key because other than, other than that, I was uh, I was like everyone else, you know. Yeah. But the passion and the desire it really made me do very good things. And what age did you realise that you had a special talent? Probably when I was seventeen. Seventeen? Yeah, seventeen. I mean. I was, uh, you know, I could see when I was 16 or so, 15, I had good qualities, obviously, and I could see that. But uh, 17 is my first uh, year playing in a in a decent league, which was the equivalent of the Conference League in in this country. And uh, for the first time, I was playing le regularly at that level, and uh, I started to do things that. Uh, uh, you couldn't see many there. Right. I don't want to be presumptuous, but yeah. I started to realize. I started to realize that uh, I was doing things that they were important things. So in that moment, I said, "Wow, something is coming. Uh, is coming good to." <laughs> so when you were at school as a youngster, you weren't just like everyone going, "Wow, this this little guy is." Unreal. It was quite a not, late developer. Not that I'm aware of. I, I knew I was uh, was good, uh, of course, because uh, football was uh, always something that uh, you know I dedicated a lot of time. So I was I was coming good, but not that. Did uh, you get picked in, first in the playground? <laughs> <laughs> They're doing picking the team. Franco. Let's say they didn't put me in goal. <laughs> That's for sure. John Franco wasn't a goalie. <laughs> right here we go. The rain is lashing down. Okay, it's gonna go down. Is that all right, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fine. Is a jam, Frank? Are you going for it? No, I can't. <laughs> I have no chance. Shot. Well, it's okay. Effortless. So Gianfranco, you made your name uh, at Napoli yeah. under the guidance and help of arguably one of the greatest ever footballers to grace this planet, Diego Maradona. Uh, yes. How was that for you, learning off him? Well, it was the, I always rated it as the best thing that uh, happened to me. Uh, you know, when you have the possibility to to practice, train, and play with such a big players like uh, like him, you know, they, they make you better. Uh, first of all, because if you want to play that level, you have to push yourself harder, and uh, that was a big lesson. But also because you pick up so many insights from training with him that uh, they make you better. There is no doubt about that. It's been a bless for me. Yeah. And obviously, it's, it must be so sad when you heard that he passed. But uh, it was devastating, I would yeah. say. Uh, I didn't imagine that uh, you could hit me so so hard, uh, so because he was such an influential player for me, for for all my family. So really suffered a lot. Yeah. And you used to spy on him, didn't you? And watch him do the free kicks and stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah, we used to spend uh, time every training session. Um, where we challenge each other on free kicks, on uh, on other uh, stuff, and it was great learning for me. I mean, it's uh, 
it was not only inspiring in a way, but also great learning. Yeah. Uh, what was he like as a, as a person? For me, he was a beautiful person. Um, very humble, very genuine, uh, sincere. I, I really liked it, but not only me. I mean, every player who played with him uh, loved him yeah. because he was, uh, he was like that, you know. He was a very genuine person. Uh, you know, he was, without doubts, the best player in that moment. Uh, Yes. But he was so down to down to heart yeah. with uh, all of us that we just we, we used to love him. Gotcha. And I, I just absolutely love that clip. I've watched it so many times. <laughs> the life is yeah. life. Um, la, 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 that's, la, la, la. that's the way he used to live football. I mean, it's for him. It was life. It was, uh, you know, uh, like a kid. Yeah. He was like a kid all the time. He lived this life. Football-wise, like a kid. Yeah, amazing. But you used when when because like I said, I keep saying it. It's the last time I say it. I promise. You are my hero. So when I used to go to Stamford Bridge, I used to get there early and, and watch you warm up. And you would do something similar to Diego. You, you would just get the ball and just smash it in the air, <laughs> and then boom, control it, smash it in the air, boom, control it, and keep the ball up. It's, yeah. You know, is that sort of something that you've learned from Diego, just yeah, to get definitely. your touch in? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was important to get a good feeling with the ball and uh, have fun. Because when, when my, my, how do you say, my mindset was like that, going into the, into the pitch to have fun, and uh, I was sure I was going to give the best of myself. Yeah. So I tried to always get in that mood before. Love it. Rest in peace, Diego Maradona. Yeah. Right, Gianfranco said, I had a pitching wedge, he said nine iron. So we're going for it. I'm not gonna lie, as soon as I see water, I brick it. That's a good shot. Oh! Dancing, Jeff Franco. We're dancing. <laughs> you see, I gave you, you a good told club, me. Eh? You told me, thank With you. A pitching wedge would have oh. been wet. <laughs> Gianfranco absolutely saved my backside there. <laughs> I had a pitching wedge in hand. He went, no, 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 nine iron. <laughs> now let's see if I can. Short. Ah, I'm short. Ah, short. <laughs> you should have given me the, the right club, man. <laughs> That's okay. Ah, oh gosh. man, he's gone short. <laughs> <laughs> did ah, you get gosh. a pitching wedge or? Short. You went nine iron? I've always been short. <laughs> oh gosh. No, I went with a gap wedge. Gap with wedge? 50 degrees, yes, it wasn't enough. Oh, it was a pitching wedge all day long, no, Jeff Franco. I know, I know, you're right. Yes, but um, you, didn't, you didn't say that before. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, um, obviously you went Napoli, Palmer, and then you came to Chelsea, Stamford Bridge, Chelsea fans like myself, all absolutely buzzing. How did you find the Premier League in English football when you, when you first got here and played a few games? Were you like, what is going on here? Well, the first things I noticed was uh, the incredible uh, enthusiasm, fantastic atmospheres uh, around the pitch, uh, in the stadiums. Those things for me, they were so good, so important. Uh, you know, I was coming from a league very competitive, very tight, like the Italian league, but where I think uh, football wasn't lived in the way I thought uh, people were living it here. Uh, I, I just loved the, you know, going into the games, giving the best and coming out to the fans, whatever you're doing, provided that you give the best, was, uh, were good and they were so supportive. I, I really enjoyed that. I think it made a big difference. Uh, I really, you know, find out, uh, rediscover the pleasure of uh, playing football for the right reasons. Yeah. That was exactly the feeling that I had at that time. What were Italian fans like then? 
Well, Italian, Italian was was become very competitive at that moment. They were uh, when I left. There were five, six teams. They they were able to win the league. So it was high standards. But I think it was exaggerated. Uh, play, players, so uh, supporters, they used to press. Uh, you, you couldn't go outside because they were on top of you. And of course, if things were going well, fine. But if things were going bad. They would be bothering you, and so the life wasn't the same. I mean, at least for me, at that stage of my life, it was important also to go out with my family and um, my normal life. Something that uh, in, the, in Italy was more difficult. Was it like sometimes too much? Because the pack, like they, they, you can't go anywhere, can you? If you're a big star like yourself, like or you know, in Italy and Spain, it's just wallop. As soon as you leave the house, Wah! and yeah, if yeah. your team's sure. losing. You know they're kicking your cars and stuff going into no, the train. Yeah. Happened to me. I, w I used to get so upset because, for me, I mean, I, I went into every game and uh, I was always ready to give everything I had uh, yeah. for for that game. I always tried my hardest, and um, and so I didn't like when people they was questioning that um, when they came to me and they say not directly to me, but in general when they came and say. Uh, as you need to give more, you have to do more. Uh, for me, it was something that I couldn't understand, and uh, I didn't like that very much. And uh, and uh, so I think that was one of the reasons also because uh, I left Italy and uh, and I came in to a new challenge in this country. And you know, for me, the the the, the supporters were mind blowing. It was uh, the best thing that happened to me, honestly, in that moment. As soon as you came, we just loved you. We just loved you. When you <laughs> no, came, we had you really signed. Good you, know, you, put on, you put on the shirt with that um, grey jumper on, baggy jumper. <laughs> we were already seeing you. Oh, Frank, that. Oh, oh, look. Pressure's on, eh? Happy. No, really. He's no, not happy. Really. It's a nice little dink, though. Uh, I know, but it's not. It's like you are coming in front of the goalkeeper and you <laughs> go, make a good chip, but out. It's not good. Mind you, look at the size of my putt. <laughs> I've got to say, London Club. It's absolutely sensational. Or Declan Rice would say, magmotional. Right. You right down there? Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> you know the line. <laughs> I think you are right to uh, right to. This is the target, more or yeah. less. I love the fact that Jan Franco. Well, I love the fact that I'm playing golf with Jan Franco. So I love the fact that he's helping me. I love the bloke. I love him. Wow. Wow. Oh, not so bad. Wow. Not so bad. Not so bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> this is Declan Spice. The man is after my money, eh? <laughs> oh. If you sink this, Gianfranco, this is the pressure is on. Pressure is on. <clears throat> oh! 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 a gimme. Is that gimme? Nice Thank you very you. much. Can I ask about your, your putting technique there? Yes. What, what, what? Is, um, what were you doing? It's, uh, I, I don't know how it's called, the claw. Oh, the, the claw. claw. This is, the, this is what That's you the mean. Claw. Uh, he uses, he's used by, uh, what's the name of the guy, the English player? Justin Rose? No, no, Justin Rose. I'll tell you in a second. Yeah. 
This is massive for me. <laughs> I'm not going to give you a <laughs> <what> advice. <laughs> You've you literally carried to... <laughs> me all the way down. You said nine iron and got me on the green just. <laughs> you are all too square. Kind. Couple of bogeys. All square. I love this. All square. This is awesome. Right, we're all square. Uh, all both square. bogeyed the first. I wouldn't have done if it wasn't from Jan Franco because he helped me massively. <laughs> I know. But you're going to carry on, yeah? You're still going to help me, yeah? I will try. I will try to be honest to you. To you. <laughs> Here we go. Ready to go. Wow. <laughs> Game on. I've got a good feeling I'm getting hustled here. You're just going to no, step. You're no, just no, going to no. step on the afterburners. No, now, no, no, no. I never know. I have too much respect for you for, to do that. Yes. Wow. Go on. That's what I was talking about. Come on. My son warned me: be careful about his draw. And. Uh, Confirmation of that. Come on the draw. <laughs> <laughs> you got a very good swing, by the way. Do you think so? I like it. Yeah? I like it the ball flight. But I, I, I don't bring it back further enough, do I? Uh, maybe I yes. I stop like... You stop a little bit before. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't... That's the problem for me. Yeah, I don't come It's so important to complete the turn. But you're not going to complete the turn if you don't start to stretch this. That's, that's right. it. So when you go here, this part is stretching. Yeah. It's stretching. Because if you compress, you're not going to be able to reach it. You have to stretch it. Right. And okay. the full turn is so important. Very good. And the, the knee comes in. Yeah. This knee comes in, like you did. Amazing. That's good. Amazing. So Gianfranco, you love the, the English fans. How did you find the English football? Well, um, well, it was different uh, than the Italian. The, the Italian one is where the, the, you have a, you use a lot of tactics on the pitch because you always. It's like you go on the pitch and you try to start stop the opposition not to play. Yeah. And then you know use your your own advantages. Like if you have more quality, then you win. But uh, you go on the pitch very aware of the fact that you have to stop the opposition first. Right. Uh, the, f the approach here is different. I mean, you go, I remember we used to go with Chelsea, with uh, Ruth Gullit especially. We go on the pitch and uh, you want to win the game. So you try to, uh, you know, score goals all the time. And I think that was the, the same attitude for all the teams. No matter what position they had on the pitch, they always went on the, on the ground and tried to win the game. And uh, that made uh, the English game very open all the time. Yeah with a lot of, uh, you know, chances on one side, on the other side. And I like that because it's, um, I mean, it's, it's very good for the supporters, especially you, you, you know, the, 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 the game is so nice to watch. And I suppose it's good for attacking players like yourself as well. Of course, get for a, me, get a couple of chances. <laughs> for me, it was good, you know, it, it's, uh, in Italy, I was used to have uh, one one player at least that he was always looking after you. Man and, marking. Uh, man marking. And, uh, you know, he wouldn't be worried about playing his own game, but he was he was more worried about stopping you from playing. And, uh, and in this country, it didn't happen very much. And no. uh, I enjoyed that. It was quite good. It did uh, It did after about <laughs> six months, though, when they all realised you were absolutely <laughs> the absolute nuts. So, like, just get him, just get him. But obviously, the football... What did you find of the, the British sense of humour? Um, <laughs> Dennis Wise, basically. Oh, gosh, you know, forget me. <laughs> she was a nightmare for me at the beginning. First of all, when he was trying to teach me English and he sent me into London saying words that uh, I regret to have said. 
uh, the, the, then it was Swear always... Swear words. Uh, what? More than that. <laughs> and I would go normally in a shop and say, you know, just get something and then come out saying thank you very... <laughs> and so on. Yeah. And, uh, and I didn't know what I was saying, actually. It's very stupid for me to trust him, to follow him in, in, his, uh, in his English. But that's what he did to me. There's I can't believe you got Dennis Wise to try and teach, <laughs> to teach you English. Yeah, honestly, yeah, honestly. Didn't, he, no, rip your, didn't he rip your book up as well? You... He did, he did, he did. Dennis? I was uh, trying to learn English and, uh, and uh, the teacher suggested me, I mean, I think you should start reading a book. It doesn't matter if you don't understand, you know, everything of that, uh, he said, but uh, read because it's important. And I started reading this book, I was so excited. It was uh, The Spy Who Came In From The Cold, yeah. um, Le Carré. And, you know, I kept reading, 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 reading. And I thought, uh, finally, after none, I don't remember how, how long, I finished the book. And I was so happy, I kept saying, uh, and, and then it's why I came to me, uh, you know, but this went for days. Yeah. I was the book, I was the book. I said, yeah, it's good. I told you yesterday. <laughs> Until finally, I think two weeks later, he gave me the, 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 the last, last chapter. The last chapter. <laughs> Frank Lampard tells a great story as well. He said when he, when he joined Chelsea, he had to, he had to get up. Yeah. and sing initiation song and yeah. he says he, he was he said he's there he goes he was singing maybe it's because i'm a Londoner." he was like maybe it's because i'm a Londoner." all of a sudden he just looked down and then you're just looking at him just like what is going on <laughs> <laughs> what did you make do you remember that day and what did you make of the initiation songs no i love we love that because um it was something that we used to do uh and I liked it because it was a way to, you know, get everybody in front of everybody, you know, the new, the new players to come in front of everybody and show what they used to do. And, uh, and, uh, and that was good. I think it's, uh, it was a good way to introduce, uh, uh, you know, the new to the, to the old players. And uh, we loved it. We, we kept the tradition. Yeah. And I tell you, one day we, we brought in uh, Baba Yaro. Yeah, yeah. And Celestine Babiaro. Celestine yeah. Babiaro, and we asked him to song, to sing, because everybody was very average and below average yeah. when they sing, of course. Rubbish. Yeah. Uh, in my case, it was very bad, <laughs> to be honest. But Celestine Babiaro was unbelievable. I remember that uh, we were, hey, you're not the one, you yeah, yeah, like, yeah, And on. then he starts singing, we were like, a, you know, when like, uh, uh, you know, somebody goes uh, to, and you, he had a fantastic voice, he was singing so well. I remember that, we, we were so impressed. Really, yeah? Yeah, so Celestine you need to get him to sing. Do you remember his uh, celebration? The flip. Oh yeah, the flip. Didn't, yeah, he get, yeah. didn't he once get injured in training doing it? Could be, I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't certain me, I wasn't going to do that. I was going to break my, my back doing that. What did you sing when you joined Chelsea? We did sing uh, the three of us, me, Gianluca and Di Matteo. Oh, amazing. Sing, uh, uh, sang all together and it was a bella ciao. What's that one? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a song from the, the war. Yeah. Where there is, uh, you know, the, the partigiano is, uh, is like a, a fighter that work, uh, fights into the woods. Yeah. So he fights and runs. He fights, uh, so it's called Parti Partigiano. So it, it's, a, it's a song uh, in memory of these people. Yeah. And uh, it's oh, Bella Ciao, Bella Ciao, Bella Ciao. It's very famous, actually. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it was good yeah. before we sang it, so... <laughs> well, then, then we you three fun. ruined it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Especially me, I have to say. I'm a terrible one singing. Right. Let's give this a bella ciao. <laughs> bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, 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 partigiano. Portami via. <laughs> Come on. No. So, uh, aiming the wrong way, weren't I? Rubbish. What do we have? 
Mr. Gianfranco Zola. I have 100 uh, meters and uh, I'm gonna try to go again with my club, uh, 50 degrees, okay? Talk I'm not sure I can make it, eh, but I'll Hey, try. come on, you can do it. Come on, jump. Oh, oh. Oh. That's better. He's a this is a lucky one, though. Eh? He's, a, he's a hustler, shot. baby. He's, <laughs> he's a hustling. I know what he's doing. Eh? Being nice to me and then, and then wallop. Have some of that. <laughs> when you were dazzling defences in the Premier League for Chelsea, you used to get kicked quite a lot. Um, because, I mean, you used to you used to absolutely destroy people. Jamie Carragher, hello. Um, who was the hardest defender you came up against? Well, in this country... Yeah, in the Premier League, yeah. I always dislike to play against the... the... the Arsenal defence. Arsenal. With uh, Adams, uh, Keon. Keon and so on. They were so tough because... They were very defensive, uh, defensive minded. Yeah. So it was tough to play against them, uh, for sure. Also, I, in those years, there was it was uh, Rio Ferdinand was coming up, and he was another tough client, really. Yeah. Because also, he was tall, but at the same time, he was agile and and quick. So it was, it was quite difficult to to play against him. He was a great defender, wasn't he? But he also he could play, couldn't he, with his feet? He Absolutely. Was a good... He was a complete defender. Yeah. He, he could defend well, he, he was good with the, with, the, with, the, with the ball, but also very intelligent. Yeah. So I'm really impressed by him. What a player. Right, I need something big here, yeah. Gianfranco. I, I need something so, yeah. big. You're putting for birdie. Need this close, Nicholas. Need this close. It's not a bad one. Oh. Oh, if I did in fact do what Gianfranco said, I would have been close, but happy with it. Gianfranco, you're putting for a birdie. Yep. I don't know if your son's told you, but on this channel, if you get a birdie, it's the birdie dance. <laughs> okay. Do I have to do it immediately? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, let me try. Come on, please. It will, this will be it. Finish the channel now, Gianfranco Zola doing a birdie dance. Unbelievable! <laughs> wow! Now it's oh, unbelievable. <laughs> Did I do it well? <laughs> oh, you absolutely smashed it. Your birdie dance was better than your initiation song. You reckon? <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. Right for a par. Oh wow! Yes. Hey, I still didn't win, but I'll take it. <laughs> Gianfranco Zola is one up on the four hole challenge. <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> So I'm looking forward to another dance now, for another dance now. <laughs> it's the only way I can beat you, is that. Oh, straight down the middle. Masterclass, absolute masterclass. Before I absolutely smash one straight down the middle, just want to thank Function 18 for sponsoring this video and sponsoring this fantastic drive I'm about to do. What a shot. Spot on. Wow. 
Very good, very I'll impressed. I'll play with you more often, please. Wow. When is uh, the Chelsea uh, the Chelsea uh, support coming from? Oh my dad, your, your dad. dad, me and Angie's dad. Yeah. He was um, he was the first person in the whole world to have his wedding reception. Yeah. On Stamford Bridge. On the Stamford Bridge. And now and now his ashes are underneath the ground. Ah, I with didn't uh, know that. him and Peter Osgood. So. Okay. Wow. Yeah. When That's I was good. when I was born, the first picture of, of me was with Stamford the Lion, you know, the mascot. Yeah. My dad yeah. got the toy and went, boom, and gave it to you're you. Chelsea. <laughs> you are That's Chelsea. Good. So now we're a big Chelsea family. So. Do you know that this is one of the, um, the things also, uh, also we learn to appreciate over here? Because uh, the people have such a strong legacy with, uh, yeah. with the club, they, they support. That's something that impressed me a lot. It's proper I mean, passion, isn't it? It's proper passion, I mm. think, I mean, don't take me wrong, I mean, he, he, everyone in every country has got his own way to support the club and to love the club. But it really fascinated me how strong it was, the, the feelings that the supporters have oh, for the it's, clubs. It's crazy. It's like you all go to Stamford Bridge and you're all like, I mean, not like any, any Premier League team, but you're all in there together, you know, fighting for that. I know that's not every football fan, but in England it's proper, like, Blocker, close knit. It's, it's amazing. I, I will never forget one game that we played the first year. Uh, I think it was the first year. We played a team that uh, I can't remember the name. I can't be precise. I don't want to say. But the, the team was uh, that day got relegated. Yeah. And uh, and uh, their fans, that there were a lot in the ground. They were supporting them. They had that difficult task because we were on a roll, and we played them. We beat them actually, and they got relegated. And but at the end of the the game. I remember their fans standing there at the end of the game and clapping the, their yeah. team and supporting the team, which impressed me a lot because, you know, I wasn't used to that and uh, it made me feel a lot, you know, the importance for the people yeah. of. Because in Italy, things. mate, that probably wouldn't have happened, would it? If, no, you know, not for sure. No. Rubbish. I mean, we are we are Latins and uh, <laughs> we are very passionate, of course, when yeah. things they go. They go well. We give everything for the for the for the team, for yeah. the players. But on the other hand, when the things that not go, they don't go well, then we can. <laughs> they let you. We you let us know. <laughs> they will. They let you know. But yeah. um, well, they impressed me because it was the first year, and uh, I wasn't used to that, and it was uh, something that I still remember. Nice touch. And who was the best manager you worked for? Who did you? Who, who just let you do your stuff? <laughs> well, uh, you know, it's. I think uh, in those years there was a manager for me who stand stand out. Um, if you say that, I don't know if you say stand out. Stand out, yeah. Stand out yeah. was uh, the coach that I had in national team, uh, Rigosaki. Rigosaki. I think it was. Uh, it was uh, one of those coaches. That it was at, at that moment. It was on a different level. Um, in, in what way? Because uh, I think he was, uh, he was uh, the way he coached. It was different from any other ones. Uh, it was more, you know, more detail. The preparation for the game were really high levels. He was one of those coaches that they didn't leave anything uh, without being prepared or without uh, thought. And uh, I thought he was, he was a very good coach, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine you f not getting on with anyone, like any of your managers. Were you always close with all your managers, or was there certain yeah. people you were like, mm, I don't really want to play I mean, for you? Bear in mind, the players, <laughs> when they don't play, they never like their managers. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. This is normal, but it's, it's a kind of uh, natural reaction. Uh, no, I never had a problem with anybody. Of course, I've had a few, few. When, when they used to take me off, uh, Gianluca Vialli or oh, sometimes Rude, I, I never liked that. But there was, a, again, one way for me to react to the situation. I wanted to, you know, be better and I didn't want to go out because... And so my reaction was, yeah, I get upset, but then I go to the training ground and, oh, okay. uh, and I work hard because I don't want to be taken off. Yeah. And uh, that was the kind of attitude. But, Honestly, I didn't, I didn't have uh, any problems with, with the coaches I had. Fair enough. 25. Gianfranco Zola, 25. Why 25? Why 25? 
Uh, you, oh, you gave me 20 meters eh, this time. <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> the gun show. <laughs> 25. Uh, when I came over here, I, I, there were three options because I came in, uh, in uh, it was November. Yeah, yeah. So all the, the numbers were given. So there were three options. One was, one was the number 25. One was, I think, a number 16, maybe. 16 or four, 16, I think. And the other one was 21. So I didn't like 16. <laughs> um, 21, I used 21s in two occasions in the national team. One was the World Cup, yeah. and I've been sent off. <laughs> Uh, the other one was against uh, in the Euros uh, qualify. Sorry, in the Euros uh, in England, yeah. Euro tournament, and I missed the penalty. So I said, <laughs> 21, 21 is, <laughs> is no question. No, I'm not going to have that. So I go. I went for the number 25. It was a great number. Unbelievable. Uh, to be honest, I did ask to to uh, Mark Hughes. Yeah. I said, Mark, please. Ten. You know, I've been playing number 10 all yeah. my life. I think uh, I'm very affectionate. And uh, uh, would you be so kind to tell me, to give me the shirt? And he said, Franco, can you just please f off? <laughs> <laughs> so, like that. <laughs> what, really, really politely? Very politely. Franco, said, would you please just yes. f off? <laughs> Mark you. Oh, what that a story so that funny. is. <laughs> well, I couldn't reply to that. <laughs> oh, what did you do? Did you just go, no, um, no, I couldn't do anything. Okay. Was, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Enough. I said, keep the shirt. <laughs> you have it. It's yours. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> right. Okay, this is not a, a an easy shot, but I cannot give you advantages. Oh, oh no! He shoot! I knew. He shoot! I know. Oh. I know. So bad. He is Gianfranco okay. Zola in the bunker. <laughs> <laughs> right, you got 143 to go over the bunker, right. and the flag is uh, 158. Cool. Yards. Right, come on. No, oh, I'm go, in. Go, go. I'm in with you. Okay. <laughs> Billy Bunks. When you started playing football, was there a lot of. Is everyone so healthy, or does it? how did it change throughout the years? You like pre match meals and. No, I think, uh, you know. Obviously, as the game, the level of the game went high, and uh, obviously more competition, more money involved. So people they become more, uh, more uh, careful for, for every aspect of the game. Yeah. So they will pay more attention to sleeping, to drinking, to f eating, training, so, and so on. Looking after their bodies, of course, the level. Uh, otherwise, you cannot survive. But when you first got to Harlington at Chelsea, the training ground was like Dennis Wise just sat there with a fry up, like, come on, Frank, oh, get over here, get stuck in, mate, bake and bake. I do remember when we were going into the these, uh, you know, the away games, and yeah. uh, there were these breakfasts, and there were sausages, and there were beans, and there was <laughs> this, and uh, and uh, we were not so used to this. And, uh, and, uh, I can just imagine that you, Gianluca, <laughs> were both in the Luca, Gianluca, because he was very, uh, you know, uh, focused and organized and everything, was, 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 you go mad about it. He didn't want anything. When he was a coach and he went into the, uh, the restaurant and maybe the waiter did a mistake and put uh, beans and he would go ballistic and go so upset. <laughs> Get these beans off my table. <laughs> Right, we're letting some uh, players come through because we're having a right old lovely chat up. Um, who else was good at golf that you, you, know, you play with throughout your career? Well, 
In Chelsea, there we were a lot of players that they used to play golf, and um, my my best friend, uh, golfing partner, was uh, Kevin Hitchcock. Kevin Hitchcock. Wow, he used to play. We used to play a lot, uh, a lot of times together with him, Mark, uh, Mark Hughes. We were always going out, Luca Vialli. We were always going out and playing after training. It was a fantastic time, actually. It was, uh, you know, it's one of the golf was uh, one of uh, one one of the tools that made us, uh, you know, build up a wonderful relationship uh, together as well because we used to get on so well. It probably helped your English as well, didn't it? You know, when you're walking along the fairways and practicing your English, when you well talking to each. Uh, it wasn't a great way to improve <laughs> my English. <laughs> but don't mention it to him. No, we won't, we won't. He's, he's very, very, <laughs> very, very keen about his, his English. <laughs> did you enjoy, you know, when you were managed? Did you enjoy being a manager? Yeah, well, I mean, as a manager, you live, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to enjoy because obviously uh, you live. Uh, uh, you are there, you're always aware of what is happening, you have to always try to control everything. So it's, it, it takes a lot of responsibility, sometimes it takes away the fun bit. Yeah. Um, but this is part of, uh, of, the, of the job and uh, there are moments in which uh, you really feel at the top of the wall, like uh, when we played the, the, the Leicester game, the, final, the, the semi-final against uh, Leicester, what for Leicester, yeah. when we oh. ended up, there was... What a mad game. Oh, there was a, a mad, mad game. game. And in that moment, I mean, you know, you finish the game and you feel so good about it. And, yeah. uh, but then there are obviously moments in which you're losing and you feel for the players, you feel for the supporters, and that is not a great moment. Yeah. Um, when you were at West Ham, uh, I spoke to a few of the boys when you were a manager, they said you were still the best player in training, and they used to be like, Gaffer, come on, just, <laughs> just turn it down, you're showing us all up. <laughs> Well, the, the, it was. Uh, I think I, I stopped playing two years before, and uh, I was still in a good shape. And <laughs> <laughs> I used to like to, you know, get, get into the in, into the games. I remember, you know, going into the into training, yeah. and I was always, come on, Clarky, because Steve Clark was my yeah. Clarky. I need to play now. No, don't say that we need to do training. <laughs> I need to get on. So organize a football game. <laughs> I was always very keen on that, but uh, but I think it was very important. And, you know, it, it was a, a, another way to, you know, build up a relationship with the players and, uh, you know, mingle with them and, uh, you know, because you were asking a lot from them and it, it was a way, you know, to establish a good relationship with them. <laughs> By not making them and training them. <laughs> <laughs> I never did, so. <laughs> I bet you did. Right, here we go, Bunker Wars. This, the biggest shot. Here we go. Lean on the left leg, lean on the left leg. What a shot! <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, you are 16. So a shot like that for well, a 16 handicap, that is a joke. Come on! Ah. Oh! Ah. Oh! Too much, just Love it. Just simply love it. <laughs> as much as I love you, Jan Franco, there's plenty more meat on I that bone. I know, I know, I know. I do love golf sound effects. Everyone's got their own sound. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's true. Ah. <laughs> wow. So this is. This is to. Well, it depends if you're giving that to me. No, it's given. It's given. To draw the hole. Oh, he rolls it in. 
delicate Risha. touch. <laughs> Gianfranco still one up on the four hole challenge, one to play. The, the final, final hole. hole. This has Let been... me say it's been a pleasure anyway. Oh, mate, it's, so, been, it's been the best. So it's like it's you. the first time that I feel a little bit uh, unsettled when I'm beating somebody. No? You know that. That's a nice touch. That's yeah. really, I feel. But you're still going to go ahead and do it, aren't of you? Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute no mercy from Jan Franco Zola. He is on the green. Right, no press. Come on. Hopefully, Jan Franco, this is going straight on the dance floor. But before I hit it, we can't not walk the fairways and talk about <laughs> that goal against Norwich. Yeah. Talk me through it. Uh, there is no much to talk about. It's one of those fantasies that you have as a footballer. You would like to, you know, score a goal like that. You know, hit the ball like that. Or, and, uh, you know, the best part is when you, you, leave, uh, you leave your fears away and you just do it spontaneously. You try to do it. And uh, luckily for me, it worked very well. But uh, I promise I tried many times in training before and after I couldn't do it again. So it's, that's the beauty of the game. Sometimes things they come together uh, for, like magic and, uh, and uh, I'm not presumptuous enough that I, that, that I can say yeah, I've done it so many times. But the good thing is that in that moment I felt like it was the right thing to do. I went straight into that and I did and it, and it worked perfectly. It was absolutely genius. I was sat. I was sat literally looking down at you doing it. I was like, I was like, <laughs> I can't, no one could believe it. I didn't realize I had scored like that until, uh, you know, at least the, the ball went uh, so well into the corner until uh, later on in the evening when I. Well, you didn't it. realize. I didn't realize the ball. I did want to do to hit the ball like that, yeah. but I didn't realize how perfectly the, I hit the ball with the with the. Oh, it was sweet, wasn't it? It right was. It was sweet, wasn't it? It was good. <laughs> it, it was, was sweet. Good. But everyone talks about that guy. Like when we said we, we had the privilege of filming with you today, everyone was like, Norwich goal, Norwich goal, Norwich goal, Norwich goal. But for me, my favourite goal you scored was the one against Wimbledon yeah. in the semi final. Yeah. Um, which one do you think is better? <laughs> well, I think uh, the, the first one against Norwich probably is uh, more uh, spectacular yeah. because it's, uh, it's, you know, it's like a flick and uh, there is a little bit of uh, something you know the difficulty is very high the the, the one with Wimbledon is I liked because it was uh, again another fantasy I had I was running in one direction and I wanted to change immediately the direction so quick I don't did it. so quickly yes yeah, so quick uh, and it came out so good that uh, I thought it was a very good goal I was pleased with that what's better well the Norwich one is more spectacular yeah. uh, I will stick to that what do you guys think at home? The Wimbledon goal, if you've not seen it, we can't show it on here because of footage or the Norwich goal. Let us know. Oh, yes, a good. Come round, come, come round. Come on, come, come on. Round. Come on. Ah! Oh, I don't mind that. Gianfranco, how's your pet parrot? <laughs> Gianfranco Zola's got a pet parrot and it's genius. Who told you about it? You told me about the parrot. And <laughs> He's, uh, he's very rude. Yeah, I got probably one of the most rude parrots in the, in the country. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes me laugh a lot. Really. Yeah. How long have you had your pet parrot? And is he, is he ruder than Mark Hughes? No, it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> no. How long, how long Mark was uh, most, more rude to the defenders, uh, not to us, uh, yeah. to the defenders. Uh, he's got, uh, he's seven years old and uh, his name is uh, Galileo. 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 But don't be fooled by the name, he's such an aggressive parrot. <laughs> In words. Unbelievable. Did, didn't your parrot once go next door? Yeah, once. <laughs> once. He ran away from my house 
And uh, these guys, they opened the door and they saw this parrot on the, on the, on the doorstep. Yeah. And the parrot said, ciao. <laughs> Apparently said ciao, so they realized it was my parrot yeah. <laughs> and they came and brought it back to me. That that is... a funny, funny story, by the way. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> right, oh, come on. This is big. I've gone for a 60 degrees, Gianfranco. What? I've gone 60 degrees. 60 degrees? Yeah. Well, look, make sure that uh, the ball bounces around here. Okay. Okay. I love that bloke. Ah! Ah! Ah, never mind. Never mind, at least I committed to it. At least I committed to it. Right, could it be the second birdie dance of the day? It could it be. I will never go, eh? Come on. I will never go. No way. Gianfranco, final question of the four hole challenge. Yes. Which I've absolutely loved, by the way. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. It's a question I ask everyone on the four hole challenge. If you could have a caddy for the day, anyone past or present from any walk of life, who would it be and why? You can't say Tiger Woods because everyone says Tiger Woods. No, I'm not gonna go. For, I'm gonna go for a sportman, but I'm not gonna go for a golfer. I'm gonna go for Michael Jordan. Oh wow! Michael Jordan. He was uh, when I was. It was my one of my heroes when I was growing up, and uh, he's been so inspirational many times. For you know, even if he had an, uh, he was playing another sport, he was uh, such a f you know very influential figure for me. I, yeah. I, I used to walk up in the three o'clock in the morning and watch his finals, his games, and it was great. I mean, it's uh, so if I can do something, I would do it with him. Have you ever met Michael Jordan? No, actually, never met him. I, I was uh, once I went to, to a rest restaurant in London um, and uh, he was uh, two tables away. But I was so embarrassed and I didn't want to bother him that uh, I didn't even do anything. I, I knew the, the owner of the restaurant, but he did, uh, he, he did say, you want to talk to him? I said, no, no, I don't want to leave him. I was so, <laughs> so nice. you know, so respectful for him that uh, I didn't even bother him. And talking about that, I was exactly the same with you. I once, no, no, no seriously, that. I once saw you, <laughs> me and Ange saw you, easy jet flight. Easy jet flight. Yeah. You were queuing up for an easy jet flight. It was the Manchester United Champions League final okay. in Rome. And you were queuing up, you were going to Italy and we were going for a wedding. And we, okay. both, we both saw you and we were just like, Shall we? Shall we? Shall we? And you got you, you got. Should have come. <laughs> you, you, that's no, very kind of yeah, you, anyway. But, yeah, so that's just weird. You say that you wouldn't go up. And we, me and Andrew wouldn't go up either. Come on. Oh, not no. enough beans. He's gone. He's gone on the final hurdle. Right. It's got. I mean, it's got to go in. Has to go in, eh? Oh, really hey! wow. So Very that's four, fun. that's a four. It's not good enough, but I'll take that one par and three, three bogeys. No, no, it's very good. That's all right, I'm quite it's happy with that. Good. In a difficult course. Yeah? Yeah. So let me see. delicate that was the four hole challenge that was Jan Franco Zola absolutely really enjoyed it thank you so thank so you. much mate it was pleasure. amazing for all of us to do this with you uh, thank you I had a lot of fun so I enjoyed it 
Brilliant, mate. You're good company, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, oh, buzzing. Please like, subscribe. Jam Franco's oh, la 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 la. Subscribe. <laughs>